Hi everyone, thanks for being with me today. In this video, we are taking a look at an orchid I bought last year and which was tagged Colmenara Wildcat Green Valley. I knew that wildcats are on sediums. They come from very complex intergeneric crossings involving night species, but I was under the impression that they were easy to grow orchids. And that seemed enough for me at the time, so I just treated this orchid as I do with other Oncidium. It grew two new pseudobulbs over the winter, and then, surprisingly, they sprouted to spikes, although they were still smaller than the pre-existing ones. I confess I did not pay much attention to the fact I just felt happy about it. As you can see, this is a beautiful blooming. There are two spikes here, and they are coming from different pseudopops. The longest spike has a total of 28 flowers and buds, and uh, this smaller one has 17 buds still unopened. And uh, can you see the leaves? They were clean when I bought the plant, but uh, during winter, these leaves became spotty. I sprayed with fungicide a few times, three times, if I remember correctly. The spotting did not go away, but uh, there's at least one new leaf that is clean. So that problem was solved. This uh, plant is being uh, grown inside my house. I should have noted the signs, but uh, for the last months my mind was away with my mother being ill and with my constant traveling to see her in Lisbon. I trusted the orchids in the house were fine and my attention went mostly to the ones outside. I didn't want them to suffer from uh, lack of water. In the meantime, my mother died and uh, gradually old routines are being resumed. So it was recently that I looked better at this plant and suddenly it dawned on me that uh, there was something different with the plant. She was kind of shrinked. So I went to see the photos in my records of how the plant was when I bought her. Comparing with previous pictures, I could see the pseudobulbs are wrinkled now, but they weren't when I bought the plant one year ago. So I thought this plant must have been suffering dehydration. The two leaves that are yellowing here and that will soon drop off might mean just that and lack of nutrients supposedly due to insufficient watering. I thought that it was my fault. Of course, it would have to be my fault. Out of the fear of watering too much, could I have done the opposite? But then I decided to check the roots. And look what I found, a bunch of dead roots. I had changed the medium early in the spring and she had reasonable roots. My Bretonias, also in the Oncidium Alliance, had had the same treatment at the same time and they are good now. So what happened to this one? And then I found out. This is one of the cooler grower Oncidium and she requires also less light. I explain. The wildcats were allocated once in genus Colmenara, which meant nothing to me apart from being in the Oncidium Alliance. But in my recent researches, I realized that the wildcats were reassigned to Oncastel genus. There must be a reason for that change. No matter what they say, 
Taxonomists do not make changes just because. On Costel plants are cooler growers than most Oncidium and they are also in need of less light. The fact is that my wild cat has been sitting here on this table with my Bretonias, Oops. getting the same conditions of light and temperature. Those are good for the Bretonias, but not suited for the wild cat. Here the light is high in the afternoon mostly, as this is a west facing window and gets some sun later in the day. This is my Bretonia Bianco Crimsy. She's doing okay. She's putting a spike and she's even producing two new growths. And uh, here, my Bretonia Shilob Token is doing great too. She has pushed several new growths over the winter. She's producing roots. And um, for my surprise, she's even putting a spike, which I was not expecting because I bought this plant in bloom, but it was in October. So, I thought she would bloom much later. But now, let's uh, go back uh, to our wild cat. I have a difficult decision to make, and I have to make it now. And um, I have noticed now that there are two plants here and um, I want to show you there is one new growth coming here on this plant on this um, smaller plant with the, the um, smaller spike and um, this larger plant also has new growths two of them as you can see there so there's hope for the future and if i want this plant to have a future i have to cut the spikes now it's not easy decision or rather i should say it's easy because um, i do like that and it's done And this one it's done. I still can enjoy these blooms if I put them in a glass vase, take them to the house and I still can enjoy them for a few days like so looks beautiful i'm going to take this into the house and uh, i'll be able to enjoy them but that's the best decision and um, there's future for these plants because now that uh, they don't have the um, flowers to worry about they will rush growing these new growths and after that will come the new roots this is the best thing to do i just don't know if i'm going to put them in a pot or mount them i think i'm going to do both i'm going to mount this smaller one and um, I don't know about this one. Mm. Just in case I decided to cut the rhizome. And as you can see it's clean. No fusarium. 
I suppose the other one will be the same. Maybe I can cut a little bit of the rhizome too. At least no fusarium meter on this one. And there they are. I decided to mount both pieces. I didn't have uh, large mounts, but uh, I hope I don't need them because um, this is just um, a momentarily situation. As soon as I can see roots, I will. Uh, I, I want to be able to pot them. This is a large plant, so I want to put both pieces together in the same pot again and um, have a large plant. This is the other piece here. It's in this large piece of uh, a cork log I had here. And um, there are, this one is good. One new growth there, one new growth there. And um, I found another one there. So three new growths in this one, one in this one. And what I'll do, I'll keep them there, in the back there, where I'm keeping the other Oncidium. Let me show you. These are they. This is my other Oncostel. This one has been struggling for the last three years. It has beautiful yellow flowers and I would so much to see the, would like so much to see them again. But it was in bark, it was in moss, uh, hydroponics uh, with lack of beads and nothing. And then in the beginning, uh, in the end of the winter, I decided to bring them out and put them in the cold porch of mine up there. And um, still they didn't go well in hydroponics. Then I decided to mount them and it seems to be working. Let me see if I can show you. There are roots sprouting. And I can see that uh, the, uh, the pseudopulp is fatter. And uh, the plant sprouted this little thing which aborted. I suppose it was an attempt of a spike. But uh, I'm a bit uh, happier. And uh, this one is here. Not uh, it's just a backlight although there is some light coming from there from over there but no direct sun and plenty of aeration plenty of air circulation the nights are still cold she seems to be enjoying it and um, this one's too this is a Miltoniopsis never flowered for me but it has a beautiful new growth which she, she never had and uh, some roots can you see them over there so they like the cold and uh, this one is another miltoniopsis and uh, it's growing new roots So I keep them, all of them together, and uh, that's where these ones are going to be. And I hope they will grow well too. If they like the cold, they will get the cold. While uh, my wild cat is recuperating outside, enjoying the night cooler breezes, the blooms will not go to waste. I will still enjoy them in the house. Well, this is the end of this video. I thank you for watching and I'll be back in the next one. Bye!